Welcome back everyone to another video. So markets rebounded early in October as we have been prepared for. We closed our puts late September and started switching towards calls as the short trade was starting to get overcrowded by the late retail traders. And we know a squeeze was just around the corner. Now that we had a huge squeeze on Friday, does it continue or do we get a bull trap and head lower? Let's talk more about it in this video. So this week we were anticipating a rally to come for the early month and Monday was pretty textbook. We were expecting a bullish but small movements up due to options flow. We had a pretty whipsaw day but closed up as we had expected. We caught the tops and bottoms of the day and it made a great scalping day for our members. Tuesday we expected a pump early day. But overall indices was bearish and we knew it will do a retest of 355 or lower. We had a pump and dump on early session just as we had expected again and retested 355. But when it hit 355, options flow was showing more downside and true enough, we dropped lower towards 353 right after the options flow have been analyzed. On Wednesday, we were anticipating either a gap up and a smaller move upwards or even a continuous pump the entire day due to the one hour oversold charts. Now we had a small drop early in the day when the options flow was analyzed, it showed it as a bear trap and true enough, we went right back up and the indices closed exactly where we thought it would. On Thursday, we were expecting a drop early in the day but the larger time frame, we were expecting it to pull the indices back up after the drop. It happened exactly as we thought. All right, we dumped really hard early in the day and ended up pumping back up midday, where the options flow actually shows that it was going to be a whipsaw instead of a one way street down. Friday, we were expecting a gap down from technical analysis. We got that gap down, but we were already positioned for calls and were bullish. We're expecting a bounce on Friday itself. Otherwise, it will be around Tuesday or Wednesday the following week. Well, we got that one way move up that day and our calls were deep in profits. Are you ready to master this challenging market? Join us now on Discord via the Patreon link below to supercharge your trading game. Trading success isn't about luck. It's about having the right tools expertise and understanding the ever-changing market dynamics. Join us now to get access to our expert trade ideas, technical analysis, market insights, market flows, and make winning a habit. Now stop missing out on potential profits. Join us now to turn your trading challenges into triumphs. The smart money, dumb money confidence is actually showing that the dumb money right now is at extreme bearish levels while the smart money is neutral but closer towards the bullish levels. Now this is one of the reasons we were closing out our shots late September and started loading longs on the way down. Now it's the same reason we were piling shots when the retail traders were going long at the top because the smart money were bearish at the top while dumb money are bullish at the top. So for next week, we have PPI and FOMC minutes on Wednesday. Thursday, we have CPI and jobless claims. Friday, we have consumer sentiment, expectations and inflation expectations. And for inflation expectations, it is expected to go higher due to the 10 year use. We are now experiencing a bear steepener, one that is not so common. The past steepeners has mostly been a bull steepener, which is when the market expects a recession Hence, they buy the short-term bills, leading to use falling on the short end of the curve and eventually when the short end of the curve dropping below the long end of the curve, that's where we get a normalization of the U curve. Now, a bear steepener is the opposite. It's not when the U curve, when we get a U inversion, instead of the, the short end dropping lower than the long end, we actually get the curve normalization with the longer end of the curve catching up towards the shorter end. Okay, this is when the market is actually expecting inflation to go higher, hence long-term rates to stay higher. 
And what they do is they sell long-term duration bonds, causing the 10-year yields to catch up towards the two years. And that's what we call a bear steepener. So in conclusion, a, a bull steepener is when we get short end curve dropping below the long end curve. And for a bear steepener is when we get the long end curve to catch up and go higher than the short end curve. So a bull steepener is when use fall, but the short end curve falls faster, causing the use to normalize. But a bear steepener is when the use climb higher and the long end curve climbs faster and higher than the short end use to normalize the U curve. So the bear steepener usually induces a recession because it will force the feds to raise rates even higher as inflation's expectations becomes unanchored. With a bear steepening U curve, soft lending is not in the picture at all. And this has been confirmed by Fed Power. Around the previous FOMC, he said he is taking the soft lending scenario out of the possibility now. Okay, because this means that the real U is actually expected to stay higher. And our economy, which is actually addicted to cheap money and cheap debt, will not last with a higher real use. Hopping over to the technical charts, we are on the VIX. So why were we positioned bullish okay, for the early October? Because of the VIX. Okay, the VIX had a few liquidity spikes, okay, signaling some buyers exhaustion on the daily chart. Okay, TSI and momentum indicators were actually rolling over. We also have the MACD, which is on bearish divergence right now, and it has already rolled over. Okay, RSI, bearish divergence. Okay, so these are some of the reasons why we actually went long for the early month October relief rally. Now, this relief rally could last up to mid October or even closer to end October. Okay, structural flows are currently positive they are actually bullish okay due to over vixing so over vixing is when you pay a higher premium okay and that is when you get high implied volatility compared to your realized volatility okay iv is right now at 17 while rv is around the range of 11 to 12 okay so these two eventually meets either realized volatility climbs up higher to meet the implied volatility or we get VIX going lower, so basically implied volatility dropping to meet the realized volatility level, which is what the SPX is actually moving on a daily basis. Helping for the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So this week we briefly dropped out of the demand zone, but we quickly climbed back in on Friday. So we are back into the demand zone, which I told you this will be a level for a bounce a bounce how high okay probably to fill the gap here or slightly even higher towards 445 even okay momentum indicators like the tsi okay are all rolling up we had a seller's exhaustion somewhere here okay midweek early week okay and right now we are looking at the rebound a okay, money flow has crossed above the red cloud so temporary bullish, but the overall flow is still bearish. Hence, you can see that it's still a red line, not a green one. Okay, MACD has already rolled up. RSI had a bullish divergence. All right, we had a higher low on the RSI and a lower low on the price. So we had a bullish divergence and the RSI is about to cross the 50, which is the midline. And once it crosses upwards, we are in bullish momentum even on the rsi okay so i'm expecting the smp or the spy okay to bounce higher to fill up this gap here or even towards 445 okay and then after that make a lower low okay towards the demand zone here for april to may so hopping over to the nasdaq 100 triple q etf so the triple q briefly bounce off this demand zone here okay so we are retesting this supply zone. So we were expecting a retest of 363. All right, on our Discord, we were already well prepared for that. Okay, and we were prepared it could go up to 370's level. Okay, which is around 
this top of the supply zone which i have talked about last week okay so last week i was talk talking about how we could retest this area here even the top of this level because of the order block here okay so we are looking at a rebound currently after retesting this level here at 353 twice okay we have the momentum indicator and the tsi turning up we have the money flow on bullish level and also above the cloud okay this is actually full on bullish and that's why i told the guys in my discord that Q, the Q, the triple Qs are actually more bullish than the spy okay momentum on the macd is up rsi has crossed 50 okay note that the spy has not crossed 50 but the triple q has okay so we are looking at a larger scale rally up towards the 370s level okay some asked me if we could make a higher high as in this level here this high here um i'm very skeptical of that okay we could okay test this high here or test this high here but um to break this high here i'm very very skeptical okay we should make a lower high okay before a longer or a larger leg down okay on the monthly chart there is a huge imbalance on this on this area here so i'm prepared for a retest of this demand zone here before we could even do a next leg higher towards a new all-time high okay there is no way okay we will bounce off here okay there has to be a few of this gap here first okay and if by the time we get here technicals turn full on bullish macro economics turn full on bullish then maybe we do a very huge bounce here okay but as of now there's a huge imbalance okay and we're about to go fill that up and on the monthly chart it is very bearish and on the monthly chart it looks as if we are about to go break your 2022 october's low all right so imbalance gaps always gets filled it's the same as um the baba chart okay back in 2021 i talked about how baba could actually go up to fill the imbalance gap at 66 okay around 66 and back in that day um baba was in the 200s plus level okay it went down to 180s i was still emphasizing on how you shouldn't buy the dip because it could go down to 60s to fill the imbalance gap and that was my ultimate low on alibaba chart okay at that point nobody believed me until when we were at 60. okay and right now i'm telling you 325 okay this is the imbalance view on the monthly chart and the monthly chart is right now turning down so we will see a few of this gap here okay even if you want to go long for your long-term portfolio this will be the level that you want to start allocating more positions into the long-term view i want to thank you guys for watching to the end i will appreciate if you help like the video and subscribe to the channel if you have not now if you find the information useful and want to support the channel you can hop on to the patreon page down at the description box below now if you join our patreon you get access to our private discord community for live market updates daily as always trade safe invest wise and i'll see you guys in the next one